Ah, my lovely sprinkles, you've joined me again. See, the Bitcoin ETF, it's a Trojan horse. I've been calling it a Trojan horse for a long time. Roca Negra and the corrupt ACC and Gary Gensler and JP Mosquito, US government and the IMF and the US Fed have been labeled as evil, poisonous scum by the Bitcoin Maxi community since day one. By the way, there is no greater act to confirm that they are all scum than what Satoshi did. He literally went, I am sick and tired of your corrupt system. I'm going to make magic internet Ponzi money. And it's going to be the people's currency. And I don't give a damn. Yours is that trash. This thing is going to have value. And he did. And that's why we're all here today. Fortunately, with the approval of the Bitcoin ETF, we've changed. A couple of people are like, wow, golly gee, we are winning the game. No, you made a deal with the devil. Got to be careful, friends, okay? So we can translate these to prices moving. It means diminished gains, okay? But I'm going to tell you right now, it also means they can naked short Bitcoin now. Confirmed, okay? So when they buy Bitcoin, you and I can't see the real open interest for Bitcoin on the government exchange databases. You see, we're lucky in Bitcoin land, in crypto land, where when a lot of people are trading, the exchanges report all the data, and you can see if there's a big bubble of positions. You can see there's a lot of people long or short, long and short. So just to tell you, a lot of people get this confused. You can't be excess long or excess short in the market. You can't, okay? There's always a buyer and a seller. Now, how we try to find excess long and shorts, by the way, there's always the same number of them. It's just that we look at the difference between the futures and the spot price. So you can throw that away, don't worry about that. But whenever there's a buyer, there's a seller, that's it. You can't say, oh, there's more longs and shorts. And then there's never more. It's always the same. It's just now you're trying to find out, okay, who was more aggressive? That's another question to ask. Now, on crypto exchanges, they report all the data. But on the government exchanges, they don't have to report the real numbers. It's not verified. You've got no idea what's going on. And we know this as well from our videos, which you like subscribe to. I've told you from Goldman Slugs. Because they literally went bankrupt in the GFC and they had to get rescued, some gentlemen looked through 40,000 of their pages of their books and found out they were net 2x short the world's gold supply in futures contracts. So they were chosen by the US Fed to try keep gold down as they kept the rates down because they were so scared of the world waking up to the fiat Ponzi. And then it was discovered. And guess what? They controlled the media. Everybody moved on. Okay, so it's a scum game, isn't it? It's, it's It really is rigged against the people. That's why, like, this is the game, man. We're in crypto for a reason. I'm working hard. You know, like a hard family-friendly show. I'm eating jelly beans. And I've told you so many times, we can't be with the crowd. That's it. Crowd consensus not only sucks in crypto, it's fatal. Really is. You know, some of you say to me, well, what if Sami, what if my friend Sami gets to 1 million subscribers one day? He will be crowd contentious. Yes. In theory, it's true. The problem to get to 1 million subscribers is you got to tell people what they want to hear. And you are looking at the wrong squirrel who holds his own nuts to do that. You know, for a fact, ain't no way. I'm looking at four green monthly candles and telling people it's the buy of a lifetime when Jim Cramer is saying, you just can't kill it, man. Crypto's here to stay, man. So that's the thing, man. But also, also, you could imply, like, wait a minute, does that mean all the people who got to the very top that we all watch? Yeah, yeah, that's right. They told people what they want to hear. I mean, friends, even, even saw BitBoy. He capitulated in 2021. He's like, I've got to get to the most subscribers. I've got to beat Coin Bureau. So I'm going to poach the XRP army and I'm going to poach Cardano. Now you think about them, philosophically, that makes no sense. Right? That, that literally makes no sense, friends. That is two opposite ends because Cardano, pure decentralization, Maxi, everyone likes, wears glasses, checkered shirts, they like eagles, they like Charles. And then XRP is just like banker coin, basically. Yeah, literally banker coin, top-down approach, no book. And then he's just like, hey, sweet, I'll get both of them. And it worked. He basically arbitraged them. He's like, sweet, no one's taking these extremes. And because they had nowhere to go, they had no voice and was able to build up the following. But 
Look how that worked out. It's funny, he had like 1.1 million subscribers. Did that do anything to XRP price? Nope. What about Cardano? Nope. Now, probably did, probably did contribute, but they still didn't hit the targets. Both of them still stopped. Cardano stopped at 100 billion market cap in 2021. XRP stopped at 90 billion. Fascinating. Also, you got to watch out for that market cap too, because Doge stopped around 80 and BNB stopped around 100 as well. So for some reason, this random number of 80 to 100 billion market cap, right, was, was dangerous. So we have to use that as our edge if we're going to navigate these crypto markets, because that, that, that's us navigating to the seas. We go, okay, we know the crowd sucks. We know Bitcoin and Ethereum suck, but you know, people still don't get it. Retailers who buy the Bitcoin ETF are literally buying into market offers which do not go and buy spot Bitcoin. It'll go into a black hole. So this is confirmed basically by Sir Maximus Kaiser, who earns probably like 100,000 Bitcoin. Famous story, he gifted Alex Jones 10,000 Bitcoin and then Alex like lost the laptop, right? Allegedly, it sounded honest, sounds truthful when, it, when he said it. So Max has been a believer from day one. Max is the great friend. You wanna, you just, just copy paste everything he does. And you'll be right in your computer, but you you, it's, you can't fake it. Okay, it, it's got to be real. It's real energy, real passion. He's the religious priest of Bitcoin. Like he is just everything he does. You're just like, wow, you did it. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it's like a, that's how you get the Bitcoin cult, man. And that's how you take it to the top. That's why there's a Bitcoin ETF, for example. Unfortunately, though, for everybody buying retail, you ain't getting Max's returns, man. Max was yelling about Bitcoin when everyone thought he was like literally a drug-infused, weed, psychotic, mental asylum patient. Okay, And some people still say that. The thing is, his Bitcoin that he bought for a dollar, it's over like $40,000 now, right? So he's literally made about 40,000 X. See, Max is still convincing Michael Saylor that even though Bitcoin has gone up 40,000 X, it's still cheap which I love, right? That's, see, that's the thing. That's the game. Isn't that the game? And also the government. And when it comes to the Bitcoin spot ETF, this is why you got to know. So if you have friends and family, you learn, you go, hey, but everyone's telling me the spot ETF is good. Why does it suck? Well, of course it sucks because when you put money into that exchange, the controlled exchange, you don't see what happens. Money goes in, it goes, buys Bitcoin, and then it disappears. You can't withdraw it out. It's just paper digits on your screen. In a real fair exchange, they would all be spot market makers who, when you buy on the ETF, it'll go to, say, Binance, the, the, the arbitrage bid, and will go, like, basically hit it up. But we all know that ain't happening because we also have confirmed the Bitcoin ETF only has around 70,000 Bitcoin in inventory. So this is not 100% released by them, but Max Kaiser's seen a lot of files. He's posted about it. And then you basically trade everything else as, like, paper. Isn't that crazy? They basically just float 70,000, right? Now, the dream Bitcoin spot ETF was that every time Bitcoin was purchased, it went to the open market and it bought it and it just sucked it in. You could never sell. That's the dream. You ain't getting the dream because unfortunately, that dream involves you embarrassing the US government. And they're not going to do that when they're in control. When the insider Fed scum want to crush crypto, they just turn on the naked short selling to overdrive. The fresh buys do not enter the spot market. Instead, they enter JP Mosquito's private trading book, which could theoretically be short 42 million Bitcoin and nobody is able to verify it. It's exactly what happened with Goldman Slugs. Hey, how are you short more than exists in the entire world? Well, suck it. We make the rules. What are you going to do? We'll literally ban the buy button, which is what they did, right? You remember with GME, GameStop? They literally banned the buy button, friends. Can you believe they literally... Can you we lived through a time where the people won and they literally, they said, eh, delete the buy button. It happened. Tell you the game's rigged. Luckily for the rest of us though, the market hasn't woken up to how rigged the ETF is yet. This means they are overexposed to Bitcoin and Ethereum. And what I mean by that is, of course, crowd consensus. Everything is baked into the price. Meet Kevin and Jeremy Lefufu. They have like... Four and a half million subscribers between them on YouTube. They're stock market boomers, okay? Now, they're like getting wet over like 13% gains. Wow, 13%. Those are the types of people there, all right? Now, meet Kevin and Jeremy Lefufu many times on podcasts. I've listened to them. They said word for word. They go, yeah, yeah, yeah. The crypto industry is a scam, but Bitcoin and Ethereum, they're the legit ones. And as soon as they said that, I go, okay, I know exactly what I'm not doing. 
I'm not relying on Bitcoin and Ethereum to fulfill their prophecy of like the rainbow friendship type price target. I knew that straight away. They are a proxy for all their audience. Remember, friends, that's why I tied this in this video. Nice tight in for you. Do you remember how I told you to say BitBoy? Benny, uh, shout out to BitBoy, of course, when he's talking about um, uh, recruiting XRP guys, recruiting Card Cardanzo guys, and like just telling them what they want to hear. Well, it's more than likely... The reason why, you know, Jeremy LeFoufou and Meet Kevin were able to rise to the top is because they're naturally good at being charismatic and telling the audience what they want to hear. Right? So that's how they're able to amass the giant following. And when they're saying, yeah, crypto's a scam, it's only Bitcoin and Ethereum legit, it's basically a reflection of how bad the bear market was and what the average person out there thinks, which means the average person is underexposed to altcoins. They don't know what real DeFi is. They don't know how to use a bridge. They don't know that, oh, liquidity exchanges kind of suck. You actually want to get in on the real DeFi and the DEX. They don't know that. And good. When they want to call, come in, they'll come in at the same door at the same time. And that's exactly what you want. That's why I'm telling you, the whole point is to tell you the opportunity is in the altcoins. Because, you know, man, everybody in Bitcoin and Ethereum, they're just praying for higher prices because, hey, yeah, third cycle, fourth cycle, woo. That's just really what it comes down to. And on paper, yes, I respect it. Vitalik's a genius. Satoshi's basically God. We completely understand it. Yes, there's money printing, etc. There's a bullish undertone. You can't deny there are 100,000 signs out there saying that, oh my gosh, these things are diminishing. And you already know from around you, man, when everyone's saying one thing, it's just game over. When everyone's rushing into one thing at one time, there's always people getting wrecked. You, you, you know, all the time. I've, I've, I've seen this so many times. It's literally like, you know, your hand touches the stove, it's hot. Yes. I, I just know now, oh my gosh, too many people are smiling and excited about this. Just don't, don't bother. You know how this ends, okay? Contrary, when people are literally feeling it like, man, it's over. It's a scam. I hate this. Look at the red candles. Yes, you know it's time to buy. But here's the thing. We've run out of that time. So you can't even always have that mindset, can you? Okay, but that luckily, we can see, still see a gap. We can still see a gap. Old coins, friends. Old coins, biggest opportunity. Because most people still think altcoins are going to go so much higher when Bitcoin breaks its all-time high. That's what they think. What does that mean? That means they're sidelined. They will be shocked when, well, we might find this is what happens, okay? I won't be surprised if altcoins go up alongside Bitcoin and they go up first here and there. Maybe we have another double bubble wave of altcoins. But then as Bitcoin goes to that $60,000, $70,000 mark, Everyone thinks altcoins are going to have like another big leg up, but that's actually the top. Okay, so the market's getting smarter. The market's getting do that do that over time, but we don't have to worry about that. We've been here the whole time. It's just the people who didn't pay attention. They're the ones that ultimately end up getting wrecked. Make sure you like, subscribe, belly button, all. Tell mom and dad we love and appreciate him. Catch you soon.